me be really honest with you guys, this is the fourth time I've started this video. What could be so freaking exciting that I would have to pause and restart my video every single time? You guys, it's history. Because I'm a nerd. And I wrote 1,500 years worth of history for my fantasy novel, The Rise of Riverstone. Which is now available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, IndieBound, Powell's, and of course, RiverstoneSaga.com. If you order from RiverstoneSaga.com, you can get The Rise of Riverstone in an exclusive gift box, complete with swag. So as a fantasy writer, and I'm sure many other fantasy writers can attest to the fact that we will spend hours writing histories of our world that the reader will never, ever care about or see or hear about. But I'm gonna tell you how much it really helps bolster each little factoid of the story that goes along with your character's journey. Because of the rich history of Riverstone, Laria's home, which is a 600 year history, by the way, and it represents a hold on her past. She does talk about how it is built from the stones of the Rivor, that river that runs alongside the house, how her family has established themselves as this great breeder of endurance horses with the strongest hooves and all of Pred, and the fact that the loss of it is a huge impact to her pride and her family's pride, and it's something that she fights to regain throughout the story. So the things that happen that you may never hear about drives me as an author to tell the story. Now, let me tell you, time is a huge factor in all historical novels, whether it's fiction or fantasy. My story is set in the 1500s. Now, that brings a couple of rules as far as the language, things that may be custom of the time, ways they travel. Those all kind of set boundaries for me as an author, but unlike in historical fiction, fantasy gives me a lot of room as far as culture and the people and the countries. The Rise of Riverstone is fully centered around the seasons, which were a people who have crops and the birds of fools are really a part of their world. The seasons are going to be how they measure the passage of time. So that helps, I think, my readers also. And because I do keep to the same sort of seasons, the spring, summer, winter, and then you can kind of measure how many years have gone by. I'm just gonna have a little sip because I'm still exhausted from last week. Even though last week you saw a video about nights, I actually filmed that out of order. And last week I was spending five hours in the kitchen making a feast. And I'm still tired. In constructing your fantasy world, have fun, man. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. I wrote this history and I had a dang fun time. I've made family crests. I've drawn maps. Anything that you do outside of the actual writing of the novel not only is gonna be fodder for maybe histories or stories down the road that you're gonna write. But it just brings the characters to life. And if they're alive for you as an author, you're going to be able to bring them to life for your reader. Even though everyone might call you a nerd for spending hours focusing on things that nobody is going to read, who's to say that someday they won't? I mean, you might write a history of your country as a separate you know, compendium to your book. And that's just more world building and fun for your readers. You know, this might have been a rambling diatribe of how nerdy I am as a history buff who minored in history. I was ready to relax and just have fun and chat with you guys. I'd rather be a scribe any day. If you want more ridiculous nonsense, please like and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Book two is at the editor. And I really hope that book three can follow very shortly. It is written. I will be starting the early editing phases, but we're going to focus on the release of book two, The Pride of Riverstone, scheduled for March 23rd of next year. Crossing fingers.
Thank you so much for being here and indulging in a little bit of a history lesson. Thank you. Thank you.